What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got an exciting video for you. I'm going to show you how to motion track in the new Vegas FX, which is part of the Vegas Post package. It's pretty easy, so let's jump right into it. Okay, so we've got Vegas FX open right here, and what I'm going to do is drag and drop in a clip to my bin. So I'm just going to drag this over to my media bin. And from here, I'm gonna drag this down into my timeline. I took a quick video of me holding some wire cutters so I can have an object with two individual points on an opposite colored background. So if we play it, you see I go right with it, left, and then I'm gonna twist it like that, and then twist it back, and then twist it back, and then go there. And that's the video. So we're going to track those two points, this one and this one. And to do that, do the little drop down arrow on the video on your timeline. And then we're going to see tracks and tracks over to the right. We're going to press this green insert tracker, select that. And then you see it switches to the layer window. And then from here, we're going to see some options open up under the track tab. So we have these options right here. So what we want to do is change the type from single point to double points. And that gives us two tracking markers. This allows us to adjust rotation and scale when you have two, instead of just the position. So we go back down to our timeline and drop down the tracker. Then we see the tracking point one and two. I'm gonna select tracking point one and you'll see it lights up. I'm gonna zoom in and get this right where I want it. If you select inside the red, it'll drag the whole thing. If you select inside the green, but outside the red, it'll move the search area. Now what this is, is inside the green area is where it's going to be searching for the point of this red. So I like to make this probably engulf right about there. Now if I'm moving left and right, we have to adjust for motion blur. So I want my track to look for this inside of this entire area every single frame. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. If we select this track, I'm going to drag and drop it right in this area. Open up the red a little bit and then open up the green a lot more. So now my tracks are going to look for the edge of these pliers every single frame. So I'm gonna zoom back out. And so I put these points on the track at the end of my timeline. That's gonna be a common mistake. So what I'm gonna do is actually drag my timeline back to the very beginning and then readjust the points. There and right there, perfect. So now once we've done that, let's go ahead and hit play. And then we're gonna see it tracking. If you click anywhere on here, like if you're gonna search for effects or something like that, it will stop the track, so be aware of that. I wanna drop down these little windows to show you the tracking motion keyframes it's adding. So I'm gonna continue and hit play again and it just picks up right where it left off. Real convenient. And so this is where it turns and it could mess up here. Then we turn back and it looks like it stayed right on target, which is fantastic. So we're gonna turn it again right here. And look at that, staying right on target. All right, so our track is done. I fast forwarded through some of the slow parts but it does go individually frame by frame and the faster your computer processor is and the faster your graphics card are, the faster this track will go. So it didn't look like I had any mess ups right there. So we're going to test that and see how that looks with a picture. So I'm going to drag and drop a picture into my media tab. And I like if you drag an object like a source file, like an image or a video, it automatically changes back to the media tab. And then you let go and I've dragged it into my project from here. I can drag it into my timeline. I'm gonna drag it above my video because I wanna see it. And we have it here. It's gonna take up the whole screen because we're in the layer window. So we wanna go back to the viewer window and we'll see that this is my object. I'm gonna increase the size of it a little bit by holding shift and dragging the edge up. And that scales it up. And then we select our video again. And then we select our tracking point. Go back down to the track tab and we see all of our information. Now, once you're done with your track, the step two will light up and you'll be able to use these options. So from here, if you have the purpose on transform, that means you're going to transform the motion tracking object data or the tracking data, and you're going to be applying it to a different layer. And so since I added the new layer right there, it's going to show up my options. I want to add the transform data, my motion tracking data to this picture. If you choose stabilize for the purpose, you're not going to be able to choose the layer because what it's going to do is keep your tracking points in the exact dead center of your frame. So it'll move your entire video around your tracking points. This can be useful in certain situations, maybe kind of like that Beats by Dre commercial where they keep the beats right in the dead center of the actor's, you know, scene and face. 
that could be useful for that. But what we're going to do is we're going to choose transform. And then I'm going to tell it the layer I want, which is the logo. And then I'm going to check all of these boxes. You can check the X position, Y position, the rotation, which is twisting around and the scale, of course, which is when it gets bigger and smaller. So these are the four options I'm going to check and then I'm going to hit apply. And there it is. It applied it to my tracking point one because that's what was selected. So now if I go to my logo and I collapse this video and I expand the logos, I'm going to go to transform and then we'll see the position, scale and rotation all got the keyframes transferred to them. You can see that's if I zoom in, you'll see that many keyframes all got transferred. So if we go back to the beginning and play it, let's see how it looks. That's definitely right on point. Look at that twisting perfectly because of the two points. So if we want to make it look a little bit more realistic, we can add some motion blur with this button right here and then keep playing it. And now it looks like that's just attached to the pliers. That looks perfect. Look at that. Oh man, that's great. And that is it. That is the simple way of doing 2D motion tracking in the new Vegas effects. If this video helped you out, be sure to leave a like down there. That'd be pretty cool. Maybe if you want to subscribe, that'd be awesome too. I'm trying to hit a billion subscribers by the end of the year, and I think you could help me out. I also got a ton more Vegas effects, Vegas image, and Vegas pro tutorials on my channel, Scrapyard Films. So swing by there, maybe you'll find something you like. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see y'all in the next video. And I'd like to give a special shout out to my super patrons, HPL Gamers and LMC.